Just join hands together and lift those hands to heaven. Father, even this morning as we've come, As we've come into this place, not to seek any man, but to come and seek your face. Let every man be brought low, but let Jesus Christ of Nazareth be lifted up and exalted in this place. Touch every single person in this room and those watching by way of television, wherever that might be, even on the reruns, Lord. Save, heal, restore, renew, Revive, empower, grace, and equip your people. For we know that the time is short and the end of all things is at hand and we must do the work for there's not much time left. And we cannot do it without your anointing. And so we thank you even for the Holy Ghost now in this room today. Quicken every single person. Let all the hungry ones that are coming this whole week between now and next Sunday night, let not one person leave you the same way they came. Even just walking on this property, let people be touched by your presence. May people have an encounter with you, Lord, and cause the effect even of this week to have far-reaching results, even unto eternity, we pray. Thank you for all of the camp meetings and the conferences and ministers' conferences we've had over the years. Right from day one, the very first ministers' conference in 96, the one we had in Orlando, Lord, you visited us. And all these years you visited us in these ministers' and leaders' conferences. Thank you for this Vision 1-9 that every eye will see clearly your plan, your purpose, that every plan of the wicked is brought to naught. If the enemy digs a ditch for your people, he will fall into himself. That even this morning, total havoc is being wreaked in the camp of the wicked. Pull the wheels off of Pharaoh's chariots. Thank you for giving America one last opportunity and another great spiritual awakening. And we give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise in this place here today. In Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to go out of your way to greet two or three people and just tell them that you love them and that Jesus loves them. Find people standing by themselves and greet them today. Don't let anyone sit without somebody greeting them and telling them, that. They loved. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Well, we want to welcome you here today to the start of Vision 1-9. I know everybody thinks it starts tonight. It doesn't. It starts this morning. Welcome to River Tampa Bay Church. And uh, if you're visiting with us, I'm the pastor. Um, but so 
been, my wife and I have been pastoring there for 22 and a half years. But this whole week we have a special guest with us. So I asked uh, Evangelist Rodney R. Brown if he would come and do the meeting. So he, he agreed and we, we're going we're gonna to basically turn the service over to him. And so uh, I'm just going to go sit down and then he will come up and take over. Well, thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah, everybody say hallelujah. You may be seated. Now, I know that might seem a little strange to you, but let me tell you the mindset that I get into with these meetings. Because a lot of pastors, they can't do this because they know everybody. So what I do is I actually come out and I pretend I know nobody. So even though I know you, there's times I don't even remember people's names because if you minister according to what you know, you'll never do what God tells you to do. So this means nothing to do. And I mean, what I'm saying is don't be offended if it looks like I do not recognize you. I actually do. But I have to do this in order to minister. Because I've seen many ministers, they pull back and well, I can't say that. The people already know that. People might know a lot of things, but they need to hear it again and again and again and again. Can you say amen? And you know that with your children, you keep having to repeat things. My mother said, if I spoke to you once, I spoke to you a thousand times. And she actually thought we weren't listening, but we actually were. We were listening. We just pretended we weren't. And repetition brings revelation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, both of you, quickly. So I just obey the Holy Ghost. That's what these services are. Just join your hands here. <laughs> so um, it's, it's bigger than anything you can imagine. You, you stepped out and the Lord heard you cry and now you begin to see it, but get ready because it's bigger than anything you can even begin to comprehend. And you'll see the increase. The increase is not going to happen like yearly. This is going to be a monthly increase that will take place in your ministry. And the Lord told me to tell you that he's happy. Jesus! He said he's happy. He said he's happy. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands and thank Him. Thank Him for His presence. Thank Him for His presence. La presencia de Dios. Without His presence, we have nothing. Without His presence, all we have is religion. We're not interested in religion. Religion is man's vain attempt to reach God. But Christianity is God reaching man to the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus came and he paid the price on the cross and shed his blood and rose from the dead. And then he sent the mighty Holy Ghost. Ministry has to be by the Holy Ghost. Has to be. Has to be. Because it's only the power of God that can transform people's lives. Not just in message, thank God for message, but signs, wonders, mighty deeds. Can you say amen? amen. That is called joy. <laughs> it, was, it was first cited when the, when the angels announced joy to the world, the Lord has come. I bring you glad tidings of a great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. The psalmist said, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. 
So if you hear noise here today, it's the sound of people's cups running over. Maybe you came to this, to this conference and you don't have a cup. Your cup was stolen to the last church you went to. Be encouraged today. The Lord is going to give you a brand new cup and He's going to fill it to the top, to overflowing. Can you say amen? It's going to spill out of your cup into the saucer and then run all over the table and then run off of the, I mean, I'm talking about just a mess. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just so you know, I'm very serious about this joy. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Without his joy, we can't do what God's called us to do. How many needs more joy today? And I pray that he strengthen every single one of you. I mean, now, I'm not talking about after the service. <laughs> I mean, now, right now. On the house, drinks on the house. I know people, people say, not another meeting of joy and freedom. Not another service of gladness. Take me back to Egypt. Let me hear the crack of the Egyptian whip one more time. Let me spend one more night with the frogs. I know, you know, people, when they see this on television, they'll call into the ministry and they'll say, it's just terrible how these people are interrupting pastor. How rude. They say, it's just terrible. How rude can people get? When we, when we first came to America and they saw what God was doing, they said, it's not right that they laugh at his accent. <laughs> now, we're not responsible for everybody here. Obviously, there's visitors. So... Just so you know, um, amen. Just have to encourage you. Hallelujah. Stand up, brother, stand up. You look happy. You drove from where? Woodstock, Georgia. Woodstock, Georgia? I'm glad you came because I heard the devil went down to Georgia. So I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came today. <laughs> his last name is Ball. Somebody said that's a word of knowledge. No, I read his name tag. But he's having a ball. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands one more time. Just thank you for his presence in this place. Praise God. I want my wife to come up here, sweetheart. Just come greet everybody here today. You know how we look forward to these times, four times a year. And just greet everyone. Hallelujah. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome, River Church, and welcome all our visitors. It's great to have you here. You know, the Lord is so good. 
He is so good. And if we'll honor Him and lift Him up, He'll honor us with His presence. Amen. Once you've tasted the presence of God, you never want anything else. You know, Brother Norval Hayes, he said to Pastor Rodney, he said, I feel like heaven came down and kissed me. And that's what's happening here. Heaven is coming down and kissing people. And heaven will, heaven will take the ugliest toad and turn them into the most handsomest prince. Psalm 1611 says, In the presence of God is fullness of joy. At His right hand, pleasures forevermore. So, if the Lord's presence is in every church in America today, even around the nations, then every church should be full of the joy of the Lord. Amen. Every church, hallelujah, every member, really, actually, we are the church. You are the church, I am the church. This building's not the church, but it's just the place where the church meets, amen. And we carry this with us everywhere we go. We shouldn't be running on empty and just come like barely rolling in, you know, like you, you know, you've uh, passed too many gas stations and you thought you could make it to the next one, I'll just push it a little harder you come, and someone has to push you into that last gas station or maybe someone even has to come and bring a can and fill you up somewhere along the road because you just let everything run out. But we need to not get run out, we need to not get depleted, we need to not get so full of the world that we, that we empty out of Jesus. No, we need to stay full of Jesus. We need to stay tanked up. We need to fill up our tank every day. We should come rolling in here full of joy, full of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing because, I, you know, I know this happened with Rodney and his family. People would come and just sit at their house. Didn't really ask for anything. They said, can we just sit here? Because they wanted to sit in that presence, in that peace. Because there's a lot of people just deal with all kinds of torment and all kinds of things, and I just wanted to come and sit in that peace. And you know, when we first got married, for a little while we stayed in this tiny little studio apartment in the middle of the, one of the most densely populated square miles in the southern hemisphere, it's Hillbra. And it's just, all it is, it's like New York, high-rise buildings of apartments. All the offices were downtown Johannesburg, all the apartments were up in Hillbra. It was kind of the crazy area, the rough area of town. You had, you know, at night you had to be careful. And um, so, but the, in this little apartment, in this middle of this, this area, people would come into the apartment and they would just say to us, it's so peaceful in here. It's so peaceful in here. And really, it was just the two of us loving Jesus, serving Jesus, but they walked in and they felt peace. We, when, when you carry His presence, people are going to feel it on you. They're going to feel it around you, and they're going to be drawn to that because the world is looking for peace. They have no peace. They, they are tormented. They have no peace. They're looking for that peace. When Jesus comes in, He fills us up with His joy that cannot be explained or put into words. And he fills us up with that peace that passes all understanding. That means it doesn't make sense in the natural mind. But that peace, that peace is not just for when you're feeling good. It's for when you go through the most trying times of your life. And we can testify to that. When you're facing loss, when someone in your family has died, you don't have to be tormented. When you're facing financial problems, when you're facing whatever life throws at you, you don't have to live in torment, but you can walk in God's peace 
that passes understanding through everything and come out on the other side. Amen. With no more gray hairs or wrinkles. But full of the peace and the joy of His presence. So you know what? We, we, we love these meetings because even though Pastor Rodney knows what God's laid on his heart and what God's put in his heart to share, we show up to see what God's going to do. It's not Pastor Rodney. He's not here. He, okay. He's not, yeah. Pastor Rodney and Evangelist Rodney. <laughs> 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 but we're always excited to show up and see what God is going to do and, and step into his presence. And, you know, I, you, we have to remind said, ourselves sometimes. She's married to two people. You know. <laughs> That's okay, I can handle both of them. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> Lisa keeps life interesting, right? <laughs> Anyways. But just because we got touched once doesn't mean that's it. Amen. We have to remind ourselves sometimes. Because a lot of times, even when you're ministering, you're giving out and you're giving out, but we have to remind ourselves to stop and say, Lord, I don't know what I need right now. You know what I need. Please come in, touch me, change me, do the work in me. I don't ever want to be the same. Because God has his hand on all of our lives, but he cannot use us to the level of what he, how he wants to use us until he's been able to do that work on the inside of us. And you have no idea how the Lord is going to use you in the days to come. It hasn't even, the Bible tells us it hasn't even entered into our thoughts, in our thought life or our heart, the things that God has prepared for each and every one of us. But as we open up our heart and say, Lord, come, fill me with your presence, you'll be amazed at what the Lord does. Amen. So get hungry, come hungry, don't miss the meetings. I mean, if you absolutely have to, you know, be away, watch it if you can, but try to be here, try to be in His presence without the distractions of anything else and come hungry and come and get touched. I really expect that there's some people, even some of you that have been coming for a long time, that you, something major is gonna happen for you this week. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It always messes up everything. Hallelujah. Say this on me. Say the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Say it again. Say the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. One more time. Amen. Hallelujah. I want uh, a bishop who I just met just two weeks ago to come and greet you all the way from Birmingham, Alabama. Bishop Jim Lowe, come and just greet everybody here today. And uh, when we met, we, we sat at breakfast, he said, I feel like we're brothers. I said, we are from another mother. I'm from, you know, because I'm from Africa, so I came to America. I'm an African-American, and he's an African-American, so we're brothers. That's right. <laughs> Greetings. It is, oh, it is so wonderful to be here. I, 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 I'm just blessed to be here among the saints. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. We are a people of God. And we can be joyful in all things because our Lord reigneth and we can joy, get joy, joy evermore because he's our Lord, he's our Savior. And no matter what we do, no matter what we have done, oh, I'm just so excited. <laughs> I'm just so glad to be here. And I, how do, you told me, to, what did you want me to say to them? Just tell them. That was what was happening in Burma. Oh, what's happening in Birmingham? There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of stuff I can't. You don't want me to share a lot about that yet, but 
No, we have to talk. This there's a but God's doing a lot of things too. You need to know that the devil's busy, but our God is even still on the throne. Yeah. You gotta tell me what you want me to say. I'm just glad to be here, Pastor. <laughs> I'm just glad to be here. Amen. Thank you so much. You. And to all the other brothers and sisters that are here, I consider it a blessing to be in the presence of the saints. May we all show love to one another and appreciation and give glory to our God for our nation to see that we love one another. And through the love that we have, through this man I just met two weeks ago, we are family. And one thing, we are African Americans together. <laughs> We are, in Jesus' name, and more than that, we are children of God, and we no longer regard one another according to the flesh, and even if your skin has gotten bleached white. Just a little lighter. It's just, 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 but it's all right. Blood. God brought us together, yeah. and that's all that matters. In the name of Jesus. I love you. Bless you. <laughs>